This is lab one for the 4003 class, uh, Materials Characterization. And this is using the, investigating the light microscope. So investigating resolution and precision of the light microscope. So in this lab, we will become familiar with the advanced operation. We'll explore the specimen prep uh, procedure and measure the features from different sample types. Um, the three different samples that we have are a thermal barrier coating. Right. The, the coating on here is very uh, thin, so it's very hard to see. The second sample we'll look at are these carbon fibers. These are um, actually uh, from a composite. We boiled it in sulfuric acid to dissolve the resin out so we can weigh the carbon fibers and get a, a weight percentage. And the third sample we have is a super alloy, and this one has been etched so we can see the grains and the different phases on the inside of this. The first thing we'll start doing is measuring these layers of the thermal barrier coating. So put the sample on the microscope. We want to check that this pin is pulled out so we get light going to the microscope. The next thing we want to do is make sure that our objective lens is on 50x in order to find the edge of the sample. Then we can see the sample here, um, adjusting our fine focus. And you may think that this is the edge of your sample because we had like a round sample. But what you want to double check is that if I move the sample on the stage, you see how it actually is not the sample there. It's actually the edge of our stage, the hole in our stage. So if we move that over, now we can actually see the edge of our sample, right, which is there. We're going to notice something here, which is that our thermal barrier coating actually consists of two layers. Actually, it's there's several layers, but two main components. These are um, the substrate or the super alloy. We have an initial coat here, which is called a metallic bond coat or MBC. Then there's the thermal barrier coating or TBC, and this is made of yttria stabilized zirconia or YSC. That's a lot of acronyms, but. The main principle is that we have a metal bonded to a ceramic. The ceramic is used for a low, um, let's see, low thermal conductivity, but it also will expand at a different rate than metal when it heats up, and this is going to be used at high temperature. So we need an intermediary layer to promote the adhesion of that thermal barrier coating. And in this lab, we are going to measure the thicknesses of either of those, both of those coatings and quantify the porosity of that. So in order to do that, we should go up to a higher magnification, switch over to 100x, roll the fine focus forward. And so I'll show you how to get porosity of this, this outer layer here. First, we're going to capture that image by clicking the uh, freeze button here. We're going to drop this uh, objective lens down and choose the 100x, because that's the one we're on. We're going to click the camera icon to freeze it, and we're going to click image, export, and we'll just throw it on the desktop. Exports. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is open ImageJ software, which is this window here. And we're going to click and drag our image into that software. So on the procedure page, there's a list of uh, things to do, but we're just going to do those in order. First thing is we're going to select the area of interest, which is in that layer, with the rectangle box tool. We're going to type on the keyboard Control shift x which will crop that area we've selected. We're going to do um, Image, Adjust, and Threshold. With this, we are going to use these sliders on the histogram to select the area that is dark. Right? So if we uncheck this dark background, you'll notice the pores are actually selecting the lighter, sorry, the darker portions of the image here, this range. Okay, so pick a reasonable area. Then instead of red as the threshold color, we're going to change that to B and W or black and white. And You'll notice the pores are actually turning white here, so I'm going to check dark background again to invert it. 
Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to make this a binary image so that it can calculate the area of the black part. So we're going to do this process binary make binary and then we're going to click analyze and measure. And in this uh, results window we'll see the area percentage here and this is calculating the area fraction of that image that is black. So this says 47.7%. So that's the area. We can do that several times for images and average them if you're actually doing research. Okay. Now, if we want to measure the thickness of those layers, we'll go back to our software and we're going to click this little ruler button over here to measure a line. And then we're just going to make sure that we're on the correct magnification here. And we'll click and drag from one interface to another. And we'll do maybe an average of three lines on both layers. And we'll take the average and standard deviation of those measurements for our report. Okay. The next sample is carbon fiber. So if we want to image carbon fiber in this optical microscope, we're going to have a challenge because it's not flat. And the size of the carbon fibers is very small. So in order to do high magnification, uh, we need to make these samples extremely flat because our depth of field decreases as our magnification increases. So um, you can think of different techniques to do that, but something we've done is we put them on top of a glass slide and maybe tape them there or just use static electricity to keep them there and, and try to you know, get a good section of the carbon fiber to image. We've also got a specification sheet here that lists the diameter of the carbon fiber as 6.8 microns across. So you can double check to see if your measurements are correct. And if not, then there's a potential where the uh, microscope should be calibrated to make sure that the line that you're drawing is actually the distance it says it is. Okay, for the last sample, to get the image to change on this screen, we should click the camera icon again. We can click the bottom right, bottom left icon here to delete all of our previous measurements. And we're going to go up to the highest magnification on this super alloy to see all the grains. All right, see all these tiny grains there? So with a microstructure like this, we have multiple phases. I want to show you um, two basic fundamental quantitative metallography concepts. And those are on this whiteboard over here. Those are grain size and volume fraction. Okay, we have a lot of grains. Maybe this is just a two-phase material. For grain size, we're going to draw these lines of measurement in an asterisk style pattern, maybe four lines. We do this in every direction because we are canceling out if grains have an orientation, say if you roll them and they're long in one direction, then they, if we measured all lines in one direction, the grains would seem bigger than they actually are. So the way we measure it is by summing up the total length of these lines, we approximate these four as being 400 microns each, so we say it's 1600 microns total, and we counted the boundaries for all of these lines together, like one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we total those up and we get 18 boundaries for all of the lines. We divide those two to get an average grain size of 88.8. .8. And then we have a devi standard deviation. So obviously not all the grains are the same size. Some are smaller and some are bigger than this number. We want to say um, how much deviation do we have? Are they a lot bigger and a lot smaller? Or are they pretty close to this number? And the way we get that is by dividing grain size by the number of boundaries, the square root of the number of boundaries we counted minus one. And that will be a number 21.53. So this would be square root 17 in this case. The second concept is volume fraction. So if we take that same microstructure and we overlay a grid on top, we'll basically look at all these intersections of the grid lines and see are they inside the phase that I'm trying to count or not. Um, and if they're on the boundary between two phases, then we have these little open circles which indicate they're on the edge, in which case we count those points as one half, 
and all the points that are inside the phase we count as one. And we say um, how many points did we count total and how many total points are there. So this is a grid that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have 49 points total and we've counted a number of 20.5 that are inside these grains. That equals a volume fraction of 41.8%, and that's how you would do it for, for all binary phase materials. Okay, so I'll show you how to overlay a grid on top of this complex microstructure. So first we're going to put it at 400x, because it's at 400. Get the light and focus correct. Freeze the image with this camera icon. We're going to go to this toolbox button and click the fifth icon down. We're going to click square grid. And insert. And then we're going to put numbers in these boxes. Those numbers are 20 rows, 20 columns. The offset for x is negative 5. Offset for y is negative 5. The grid width is 3,000. The grid height is 3,000. Okay. This is going to give us a total of 72 points, intersections that we can see. And we essentially will keep a tally list of each of the three phases that are in this material, so gamma, gamma prime, and carbides. And then we'll note down, we'll do tally marks for each intersection, which phase is that intersection in. We'll count those, and we'll divide each of those by 72, and we'll get a percentage for each of those phases.